Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this webcast presented by the Global Legal Entity Identifier Foundation, In Short Life. First, let me offer a personal introduction. I'm Claire Rowley, Head of Business Operations for Glyph, and I'll be your host for this webcast. I'm joined by two of my Glyph colleagues, each of whom will present selected slides. They are Stefan Wolf, Glyph's CEO, and Christoph Schneider, Glyph Head of IT Development and Operations. With today's agenda, we will focus on how to advance digital identity with the Legal Entity Identifier, or LEI. We'll address the following topics. First, we'll provide a brief introduction to our organization and the concept of the LEI. Next, we'll identify the key challenges of entity identification in the digital age based on research carried out by Glyph. The findings demonstrate that complexity can be removed from business transactions if disjointed information is replaced with a globally accepted approach for entity identification based on broad LEI adoption. We'll then move into mapping. To conduct business digitally, counterparties must be identified without ambiguity. Many businesses use mapping solutions to do this. This matches Entity Identifier A against Entity Identifier B to ensure that both are recognized as referring to the same organization. During this presentation, we'll describe the Glyph mapping certification process. We'll then also introduce the Enhanced LEI Search Tool 2.0. This tool empowers data users to connect the corporate dots globally. In addition, we'll take a look at the next Glyph Application Programming Interface, or API for short. And lastly, we report on next steps towards an assessment of whether distributed ledger technology could be leveraged for data collection and distribution in the global LEI system. We'll also briefly discuss our proposal to integrate LEIs into digital certificates. And finally, we'll close with an update on the latest developments concerning the Glyph funding model. So let's begin with a brief, brief recap on the role of Glyph. In June 2014, the Financial Stability Board established Glyph to support the implementation and use of the LEI. Glyph itself is a supranational, not-for-profit organization. It is tasked to manage the only open, non-proprietary entity identification system designed to the public good. We're responsible for ensuring the operational integrity of the global LEI system. The foundation is backed and overseen by the LEI Regulatory Oversight Committee. This committee represents public authorities from around the globe that have come together to drive forward transparency within global financial markets. By its statutes, Glyph is agnostic to any particular commercial or political interests. So in a, nuts in a nutshell, we provide the only global online source for open, standardized, and high quality legal entity reference data. By doing this, we enable people and businesses to make smarter, less costly, and more reliable decisions about who to do business with. So let's have a closer look at the LEI itself, starting with the definition. The LEI is a 20-character alphanumeric code based on the ISO 17442 standard developed by the International Organization for Standardization. It connects to key reference information that enables clear and unique identification of legal entities participating in financial transactions. One of Glyph's key responsibilities is to provide access to the full global LEI repository free of charge to users via an open data license. We do this by making available the global LEI index. This contains historical and current LEI records, as well as the related reference data in an authoritative central repository. It's the only online source that provides open, standardized, and high-quality legal entity reference data with the potential to capture any entity engaging in financial transactions around the world. The publicly available LEI data can be regarded as a global directory. It significantly enhances transparency in the global marketplace. You can find more information on Glyph and the LEI via our website. I mentioned earlier that to conduct business digitally, you must be able to unambiguously identify your counterparts. In this section of the webcast, we'll describe some of the key challenges of entity verification in the digital age. These challenges have been identified with research carried out by Glyph, and we'll also outline how the LEI can be leveraged to address these challenges. 
The way that we work has been revolutionized by technology. The automation and digitization of many manual processes within and across organizations has led to considerable time and cost savings. The rise of digital technology has also simplified the process of setting up a business. It's easier more now than ever to conduct cross-border deals and enter new markets. Yet despite the advantages, there are also a number of challenges that emerge from our increasingly globalized digital economy. One of these, which can be time consuming and costly, is verifying the identity of customers, partners, or suppliers. This concern is clearly reflected by businesses in a report we have made available on our website. The report is called A New Future for Legal Entity Identification. Legal Entity Identification. It outlines research findings from a study that Glyph undertook with research agency Loudhouse. The study explored the challenges of entity identification, including Know Your Customer or KYC due diligence in financial services. We surveyed in total 102 senior salespeople in the banking sector. The questions we asked focused on regular challenges they faced with a particular focus on KYC regulation. Our respondents came from companies of all sizes, from small businesses right up to larger enterprise level. We split respondents evenly across three key territories, the UK, the US, and Germany. We also sourced respondents from a number of different key sales roles, including lead, VP, and head. Here to outline the findings of our research is Stefan Wolf, Glyph CEO. Stefan. Thank you very much, Claire, and welcome, everybody. Today, we'll take a look at some key findings from our research, and we'll explore why they matter, in particular, with regard to the future of entity identification in the digital age. We discovered that financial institutions use, on average, four different identifiers to identify one legal entity throughout their client relationship. This shows us that many businesses are a long way from being perfect in a perfect world where clear entity identification is the norm. The problems this creates becomes, become clear when we look at the problems that occur during onboarding processes. Almost half of our respondents reported seeing the same ID being used for different entities or seeing one entity with more than one identifier. Unsurprisingly, the knock-on effects of these entity identification problems is that the onboarding process takes far longer than it should, typically six weeks. This takes up salespeople's time, which could be better spent elsewhere. At Glyph, we firmly believe that these problems are untenable in the longer term. We also believe that only the adoption of a standardized widespread approach will solve them. For that reason, we suggest that the adoption of the LEI can deliver quantifiable value. Quantifiable in terms of a shorter onboarding process and quantifiable in helping salespeople to focus more on their time on finding customers and generating revenue rather than entity identification tasks. As well as draining time and hindering transparency, there is an even bigger business issue at stake. Our research found that client organizations aren't always sympathetic to the compliance and regulatory demands placed on financial service businesses. The top challenges identified by respondents include the risk of losing business due to a length and complexity of the onboarding process, client security concerns regarding who is able to access and view the documents, and continuous changes in KYC regulation. This lack of sympathy means that client organizations are willing to move their business elsewhere if they feel that the onboarding process is taking too long. Our research respondents believe that 15% of business is at risk as a result of the client losing patience with the process. They also said that 14% is lost because the client identity cannot be verified. Client identity cannot be verified. Of course, the irony is that the legal entity might not find the process any quicker if they do take their business elsewhere. Our research shows that the majority of financial institutions are using four or more identifiers to onboard new entities. This means they are therefore liable to the same inefficiencies. If you need a reason to believe that a change is necessary, then this is it. In the most basic terms, without a change in how things are done, financial institutions will lose business to competitors. 
Our research demonstrates that there is a growing demand for a robust, simplified, and improved identification process. In fact, 52% of our respondents think that onboarding time is only going to rise. They put this down to a combination of increased fraud, tighter regulations, and growth in today's business landscape. Businesses need an entity identification system that keeps them on the right side of both regulators and clients while making them more efficient overall. And businesses are aware that new technologies are increasingly likely to play a part in that. The majority of financial institutions expect new technologies to be integrated in the onboarding process of new client organizations. And such technologies include digital signatures, KYC utilities based on blockchain technology and digital certificates. However, there's a caveat to go along with that. 61% of our respondents believe that the growth of digital solutions will actually make identity verification more difficult. And this is simply because it will mean a rise in the number of legal entities transacted with. In light of this caveat, should business hold back on digital improvements? Of course not. Instead, we must find a way of identifying entities that reduces the complexities brought about by digital and make the job easier for everyone. There's a huge burden on business to comply with KYC, but this is made harder than it needs to be by a lack of identity, entity identifi by a lack of entity identifiers that business can trust. That's why Glyph exists. We can work with businesses to provide accurate, up-to-date, and consistently high-quality legal entity reference data. We can mitigate the effects of the problems caused by poor data, making the onboarding process faster, and help salespeople getting on with the fundamentals of their jobs rather than entity administration. Financial services business can save time gain greater transparency and work in a more streamlined fashion by adopting an LEI for each client organization. Banks operate in multiple jurisdictions and therefore need a global standard. The LEI offers businesses a one-stop approach to identifying legal entities, and this has the potential to take the complexity out of business transactions. The LEI can be integrated into other entity verification methods, including solutions based on digital certificates and blockchain technology. This allows market participants to connect all records associated with an organization and identify who owns whom. By becoming the common link, the LEI provides certainty of identity in any online transaction. This makes it easier for everyone to participate in the global digital market space. Thank you, Stefan. As Stefan described at Glyph, we wish to simplify entity identification in the digital age through broad adoption of a global and common standard, that being the LEI. Identifier mapping supports this goal by matching entity identifier A against entity identifier B to ensure that both are recognized as referring to the same organization. The Glyph Certification of LEI Mapping Service is a free of charge certification process. It ensures that organizations use state-of-the-art methodologies to accurately map the LEI to their own identifiers. Data vendors and other organizations can benefit significantly from mapping their applicable identifiers to the LEI. Vendors can offer enhanced functionality to their customers by engaging in the Glyph Certification Service. This includes entity verification processes can be streamlined if they are interoperable across parallel ID platforms. Data management costs can also be reduced for data users. The process of aggregating, gathering, aggregating, and reconciling counterparty information can be eased through the certification. The subsequent publication by Glyph of publicly available open source relationship files which match mapping partner identifiers against corresponding LEIs also improves the access to information. This can be useful for many purposes, including compliance, regulatory reporting, client relationship management, and due diligence. The certification of mapping service also supports the integrity of the global LEI system. It does this by ensuring that quality controls associated with mapping identifiers to the LEI meet or exceed requirements defined by GLYPH. In February 2018, Glyph and Swift introduced the first open source relationship file that matches a business identifier code, or in short, BIC, assigned to an organization against its LEI. 
The BIC is an international standard developed by ISO for the identification of institutions within the financial services industry. SWIFT is the registration authority for the BIC standard appointed by ISO. In its role, SWIFT receives BIC registration requests, assigns a BIC, and publishes the related BIC data record. The BIC to LEI relationship file is built upon a mapping process established by SWIFT and certified by GLICE. It's published in CSV format and is updated on a monthly basis. With the launch of this open source file, GLICE and SWIFT have pioneered a cooperation model. For the first time, market participants are able to link and cross-reference these key entity identifiers free of charge. The open source BIC to LEI relationship file is an important step towards consolidating information. This will significantly reduce the cost associated with entity verification to date. The process of gathering, aggregating, and reconciling counterparty information across parallel ID platforms is eased thanks to the interoperability that results from these open source BIC to LEI relationship files. This is particularly relevant to service providers active in the payments and over-the-counter derivatives markets concerned with client relationship management or due diligence relevant to KYC and Know Your Supplier. In September 2018, the Association of National Numbering Agencies, in short, ANA and GLIFE, announced the signing of a new initiative to link international securities identification numbers, ISINs, and LEIs. The initiative helps to improve transparency of exposure by linking the issuer and the issuance of securities. The ISIN is the recognized global standard for unique identification of financial instruments, such as securities. As registration authority for ISIN, ANA has the responsibility for evolving and promoting the ISIN standard through its work and collaboration with members, regulators, and the industry at large. As a result, today ISINs are issued in more than 200 jurisdictions worldwide, enabling cross-border trading and improved transparency. Glyph and ANA will work together to map new as well as legacy ISINs to their corresponding LEIs. Once implemented, the ISIN to LEI mapping table will be made freely available to all without restriction on both the Glyph and ANA websites. By linking these two ISO standards together, firms will be able to aggregate the data required to gain a clear view of their securities exposures within a given issuer and its related entities. It's important to highlight that while a link between ISINs and LEIs has been mandated by some regulations, Glyph sees this new initiative as beneficial to the entire global market. It's the first big step in having tools available for aggregation of data necessary to assist with risk and exposure management. Well, earlier in this webcast, we highlighted that businesses across the globe are grappling with how to develop and implement a common entity identification system that could serve as a linchpin to identify financial market participants and connect data. We also pointed out that, in our view, broad adoption of the LEI is the answer to that question. The Global LEI Index is the only global online source that provides open, standardized, and high-quality legal entity reference data. Each LEI contains information about an entity's ownership structure, answering the question of who is who and who owns who. One of GLIFE's key responsibilities is to provide easy access to this full global LEI repository free of charge to users via an open data license. There are different ways to access Glyph's publicly available LEI data pool, for example, via the web-based search tool or our file download service. Depending upon how users choose to access the LEI data pool, they are able to source additional information relevant to the LEI record, such as enhanced enriched reference data or other identifiers that have been mapped to the LEI. And here to tell you about the new LEI Search Tool 2.0 that has been developed by Glyph is Head of IT Development and Operations, Christoph Schneider. Thank you, Claire. Indeed, the beta version of the LEI Search Tool 2.0 will be launched in December 2018. It provides enhanced options to access open, standardized, and high-quality LEI data. Market participants can use the tool to easily explore information on all organizations contained within the public LEI data pool. 
version 2.0 provides enhanced functionality, including the option to identify corporate ownership structures or pinpoint other identifiers that have been mapped to an LEI. Anybody can access and search the complete LEI data pool free of charge and without the need to register using the web-based LEI search facility developed by Glyph. Similar to a sophisticated, easy-to-use search engine, it empowers users to quickly find LEI data without any technical restrictions. Version 2.0 of the search tool introduces additional features, including a new and intuitive user interface, which is built on a Google-like approach that allows users to quickly research specific information on a legal entity by entering a search term into a text bar. Queries can be tailored to the specific needs of the user via search options and filters. In addition, other identifiers mapped to the LEI automatically show the search results. The new tool also returns the corresponding BIC to an LEI record where applicable. As new partners join Glyph's mapping program, other identifiers linked to an LEI will show with search results. For those seeking to dig even deeper into the LEI data pool, the new search tool offers an expert mode. This allows users to configure and combine their own search filters to facilitate the design of complex queries. A complex query is one in which there is a combination of multiple and potentially limitless variables. For example, I want to identify all LEIs registered within a defined timeline whose legal name contains the term bank and that own companies in a specific country. Last but not least, the new version 2.0 of the LEI search tool also allows the easy identification of ownership information. Just to recap, the business card information available with the LEI reference data, such as the official name of a legal entity and its registered address, is referred to as level one data. It provides the answer to the question of who is who. In addition, the LEI data pool includes the level two data that answers the question of who owns whom. Provided that both child and parent entities have an LEI, market participants can now identify the direct and ultimate parent of a legal entity. The same is true vice versa. The entities owned by individual companies can also now be identified. Specifically, this means if the direct and or ultimate parents of an LEI registrant have obtained an LEI, the LEI of the parents is published together with the LEI record of the child entity. Likewise, the LEI record of an organization that is the direct or ultimate parent of another organization that has obtained an LEI will display the LEI of the child entity or entities. In summary, the LEI offers market participants a standardized one-stop approach to entity verification in the digital age. It facilitates quick access to consistent and accurate information on both client organizations and other business partners and suppliers. The new LEI search tool 2.0 makes it even easier to take full advantage of the publicly available LEI data, supporting even more use cases and applications. With this new release, Glyph offers improved access to a unique and free data source that allows corporate dots to be connected globally based on open, standardized, and high-quality LEI data. To ensure the tool continues to evolve in line with market needs, Glyph invites comments on this beta version of the LEI search tool 2.0 by June 30, 2019. We really would like to encourage all stakeholders to explore the possibilities available with this tool and to share your comments with us. Information on how to participate in this public consultation can be found on the Glyph website once launched on December 11, 2018. Thank you, Christoph. Glyph is also working towards the launch of a new API in 2019. Could you describe for us some of the main features of this new API? Sure. To give some background information, in September 2017, we launched the Glyph LEI Lookup API. It gives developers direct access to the complete LEI data pool in real time to enable on-demand checks for changes to specific LEI records. Importantly, the API makes this data convenient to access and easy to read. The application responds to the need of LEI stakeholders to include LEI data in automated processes. The current Glyph LEI Lookup API makes it possible to submit one request for up to 200 LEI records included in the global LEI index. 
As a result, data users can quickly retrieve information on specific LEIs instead of having to download the entire file comprising the LEI population or to manually search for individual records. The API can be used free of charge and registration is not needed. Further enhancements will be made to the API in 2019. Many additional features will be available. For example, searches for information based on any LEI record field plus a selection of parent or child entity data fields will be possible. It will also be possible to search by LEI or legal entity name or matching BIG. Bulk search results will be allowed. For example, consider the request to return all LEI records with an address in China. Search results will include direct and ultimate parent reporting information, and search results will also be enriched with additional LEI reference data. Back to you, Claire. Thank you, Christoph. We'll now continue our discussion on advancing digital identity with the LEI. To do that, we'll outline GLIFE's next steps in assessing if and how distributed ledger technology, or DLT, could be leveraged for data collection and distribution in the global LEI system. On the same topic, we also will briefly discuss our proposal to integrate LEIs into digital certificates. And here to tell you more is Stefan. Yes, and this is another very exciting uh, part of our journey. We are currently working to initiate and manage a consultative process designed to explore considerations for changes to the structure of the global LEI system. Clive uses the term Global LEI System 2.0 to describe the target state that could result from recommendations of this consultation. This consultation process will address various aspects of the Global LEI system, including how to further develop the technical infrastructure used to collect and distribute LEI data. The current file-based collection and distribution model has almost reached the end of its journey. Uploading, parsing, and distributing large files is time-consuming and no longer state-of-the-art. The introduction of on-demand requests using the Glyph API can resolve some of the issues. However, with further growth of the LEI data pool, this is also limited in size and speed. Glyph will seek feedback on technical solutions for managing the data collection and distribution within the global LEI system, such as distributed ledger, distributed databases, or distributed server models. Relative to data collection, greater use of messaging could be considered to allow for more efficient communication within networks, such as messaging from regular users of the LEI data, banks in particular, and LEI issuing organizations. Lastly, security is also a concern, either for the exchange of files or single record level instances. Distributed ledger technology prototypes for customer onboarding and financial transactions can be seen around the world. Yet identity management is still a missing component. There is no common way of identifying legal entities across such solutions. As a result, financial institutions will end up with a mix of DLT solutions for specific business scenarios, yet none of them will be interoperable. One way to address this is to leverage the LEI as an identifier within nodes in a specific DLT network or across networks. In this context, let's further explore if the LEI within digital certificates could be a solution to the interoperability problem. The growth of digital certificates, whether issued by governments or the private sector, has allowed organizations and individuals to get on and do business digitally. However, can organizations really trust the information that digital certificates provide when there are many variables which call into this question? For instance, digital certificates are easily obtained from a host of different issuers and are not kept up to date in a systematic way. Secondly, organizations will often have multiple certificates under different names, each with varying and inconsistent information. And finally, there is no way to relate one certificate to another or to determine the links between different parties. In summary, determining identity in the digital sphere will only become more difficult, more time-consuming and costly with no fundamental connection between different digital certificates relating to one entity. A solution is needed to build certainty and trust into the system. Clive's vision is to simplify identification for the digital age by combining the LEI with digital certificates. 
This means integrating the LEI into digital certificates will not only allow anyone to easily relate all records associated with an entity, but also provide information on who owns whom. Doing this will significantly reduce the complexity and cost, both people and technology related, associated with due diligence and validation of customers, partners, and suppliers. By becoming the common link between digital certificates, the LEI will provide certainty of identity in any online transactions. This will make it easier for everyone to participate in the global digital market space. So, these are some of the questions we will address together with stakeholders during this consultation on the Global LEI System 2.0, which is to be launched in 2019. This process will ensure that the LEI remains a valuable identifier for the digital economy. We'll carry out this consultation in collaboration with the LEI Regulatory Oversight Committee. The public consultation seeks to gain feedback from financial sector participants, such as global banks, development banks, financial data vendors, relevant representative bodies of the supply chain management industry, customs and border organizations, and representatives of the digital identification management space. We'll communicate on the consultation process also via our website and social media channels starting in 2019. To conclude, in November 2018, the Financial Stability Board, FSB in short, stated in a letter to the G20 leaders, and I quote, the FSB is working to ensure that the G20 can harness the benefits of new financial technologies while containing associated risks to financial stability. More generally, the FSB and standard setting bodies are exploring how the broad range of innovations, including distributed ledger technology, the global LEI, artificial intelligence, and various payments technologies, could promote financial stability while bringing wider benefits to consumers and businesses. And this is the end of the quote. Our global LEI system 2.0 initiative is fully aligned with these objectives. Thank you, Stefan. Last, uh, but certainly not least, Glyph continuously works towards further increasing competition in the global LEI system. And Stefan, would you have a few last words on this topic? Indeed, the global LEI system is designed to encourage competition between the LEI issuing organizations. This is to the benefit of legal entities seeking to obtain an LEI. The fees charged for the issuance and maintenance of an LEI are entirely a matter for the LEI issuing organizations, but must be cost-based. Life is a not-for-profit foundation which makes all its services to users available free of charge. We also provide complete transparency on the Glyph funding model. In 2018, Glyph received $17 per issued or renewed LEI from the LEI issuers. In 2019, Glyph will lower this fee to 11 US dollars. This means in total a 35% fee reduction in 2019. Since 2015, Glyph has lowered the fee per LEI collected from the LEI issuers by almost 50%. Thank you, Stefan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this webcast discussing next steps to advance digital identity with the LEI. We do hope that this has been of interest and of use to you. If you have any feedback on this webcast, we welcome your comments. You can email them directly to us at info at Thank you and goodbye on behalf of Glyph.